This video covers the essential information you'll need to use monocyte distribution with effectively in your practice. My name is Melissa Nyman, and I'm the medical director for sepsis and host response at Beckman Coulter Diagnostics, the company that developed monocyte distribution with. Monocyte distribution with, or MDW, is a regulatory cleared marker. MDW is assessed as part of the CBC with differential, so there are no extra blood draws and no extra orders. Providers will see one new parameter on the CBC with diff lab report. So let's discuss the scientific rationale behind MDW, and then I'll share some data on its diagnostic performance and clinical utility. Treating infection is time sensitive. Clinical data have clearly demonstrated that the sooner you begin appropriate treatment, the better your chances are of improving patient outcomes. The challenge is that somewhere on the order of 63% of patients who ultimately receive a sepsis diagnosis present to the emergency room with ambiguous symptoms like fever, chills, cramps, or fatigue. Current screening tools leverage several convenient and reliable clinical variables to recognize severe infection and sepsis, but there's still room for improvement. For example, in the pivotal trial for MDW, of over 2,100 patients who presented to the emergency department, 33% of patients diagnosed with sepsis presented with less than two SERS criteria. 88% of the same patient population had a QSOFA score of less than or equal to one. MDW provides additional objective information during patient assessments to help differentiate between infectious and non-infectious etiology. The premise behind MDW is that monocytes change size and shape when activated by the presence of pathogens, whether bacterial, viral, or fungal. We can detect this heterogeneity during the CBC with differential. MDW is a risk stratification tool, and it measures the risk that a patient has sepsis or will develop sepsis in the next 12 hours. It is not intended to rule in or rule out sepsis. An MDW value greater than or equal to 20 in combination with patient history, other lab values, screening tools, and your clinical judgment, supports putting that patient on an infection-oriented care pathway. An MDW value below 20 is interpreted as lower probability of severe infection or sepsis. For the purposes of clinical interpretation, it may be helpful to consider likelihood intervals, which indicate how many times more likely a patient is to have or develop sepsis based on MDW value. MDW is not a replacement for lactate. They measure two completely different biochemical processes and should be interpreted differently. MDW is based on early immune response, and elevated MDW levels signal a risk of severe infection or sepsis. Elevated serum lactate corresponds with tissue hypoperfusion and hypoxia consistent with organ failure in critically ill patients. So next, let's review the clinical evidence that shows how MDW reliably stratifies sepsis risk. Several clinical trials have demonstrated that MDW values increase with patient acuity. These box and whisker plots derived from the U.S. pivotal trial data that supported the FDA clearance show that patients were successfully stratified by diagnosis under sepsis 2 criteria and sepsis 3 criteria. Under both paradigms, increased median MDW values correlate with infection. Also, in both cases, the cutoff of 20 differentiates sepsis and serious infection from other lower-risk patients. Similarly, a blinded prospective cohort study, which served as the pivotal trial in the EU, showed similar outcomes, where MDW value increases aligned with infection severity, whether using sepsis 2 or sepsis 3 criteria. The relationship between MDW value and infection severity was replicated in a tertiary teaching hospital in Korea, and in an analysis of the largest patient cohort to date, almost 8,000 patients presenting to the emergency department at John Hopkins Hospital. Finally, I'll share clinical evidence that MDW has potential to improve early sepsis detection above and beyond current best practice. The predictive value of MDW is enhanced when combined with white blood cell count results. These charts, known as rock curves, compare the diagnostic ability of several common infection markers. A perfect diagnostic tool would have a score of 1, and the higher the curve, the better its performance. The rock curve on the left is based on data from the U.S. Pivotal Trial. The thick purple line represents the diagnostic ability of combining MDW and abnormal white blood cell count, 
which was superior to white blood cell count alone, MDW alone, and lactate. The rock curve on the right is based on clinical data from the European pivotal trial, and the green dash line represents the diagnostic ability of combining MDW and white blood cell count, which again was found to be superior to MDW or white blood cell count alone. The European pivotal trial also analyzed changes in diagnostic performance across common infection markers alone and in combination. Combining procalcitonin or C-reactive protein with MDW plus white blood cell count did not show any significant increase in diagnostic power. So basically, combining MDW and white blood cell count results had similar diagnostic utility to C-reactive protein and procalcitonin. So to wrap up, if we think about the typical care pathway for a suspected infection, it starts with triage and progresses through routine labs. However, in some patients, even after physical exam and routine lab results, the treatment pathway is still not clear. MDW provides an additional objective data point early on in patient presentation to the emergency department because results are available as soon as a CBC with diff is reported. This extra information can assist the physician in bumping up severe infection or sepsis higher in his or her differential diagnosis, even when other symptoms or labs are ambiguous. If you're interested in learning more about MDW, you can find additional educational resources, including case studies and articles, on the Beckman Coulter website.